Who remembers when there was a rhino that grew larger than Tyrannosaurus Rex? Well, as impossible as it sounds, it did exist. Let's talk about it. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, bringing you another case study. Today's subject of analysis is one of the largest mammalian creatures to have ever walked the planet, this being Paraceratherium, also known as the knee hornless beast. Just before we jump into this, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's hit this time machine. The evolutionary lineage of this giant isn't too confusing, so let's lay out the foundation. Modern rhinoceroses belong to the superfamily known as Rhinocerotidae, and this superfamily dates back to the early Eocene period around 50 million years ago. Within this superfamily, there are five smaller families, four of which are now extinct. The main three which you need to know for this video include Rhinocerotidae, also known as the true rhinos, Hyrocodontidae, and Paraceratheriidae. Now, you might be wondering how come the true rhino family and the super family basically sound alike? Well, that's just science for you. Anyways, in prehistoric times, this group exhibited a wide diversity ranging from the size of a dog to the immense Paraceratherium, and back in their time, many seemed to have been hornless. Identification of rhinoceros fossils and those that are related rely on dental features along with skull characteristics. Originally, it had seemed that Paraceratherium was classed under the group Hyrocodontidae. Yet, dated cladistic studies, including one by Luke Holbrook in 1999, challenged its classification, suggesting that Paraceratheriidae may not have formed a natural group. And then there was a whole decades debate which proceeded with, which pretty much went back and forth trying to figure out where it placed. But let's just move over that and jump into the last decade. Some of the latest studies by Wang et al. 2016, Meng et al. in 2020, and Deng et al. in 2021 looked further in revising its taxonomy, placing Paraceratherium outside of Microdontidae and into its own distinct species, placing them quite closely to the true rhinos. Now, as always, it's still quite debated, but it seems that currently Paraceratheriidae is its own distinct family. Its ultimate evolutionary lineage shows progressive growth. Originally, its relatives would have been around the size of large dogs, but yet by the late Eocene, species like Juxia started to approach its size, being around a ton in weight. And then when Artrinotherium came around, it was about comparable to the smallest Paraceratherium. And then by the early Oligocene, Paraceratherium finally came to be. But now we can go on to why a lot of you may have picked this video, this being what its true size was. Well, there is no doubt that this was a beast and a half. It's like if you had a giraffe and max out its thickness, except instead of being a giraffe, it's a rhino. It measured around 4.8 meters tall at the shoulder, 7 meters long, with a theoretical maximum weight of around 20 tons, although more conservative higher end weights placed at around 15 to 17 tons, with its average being around 11 tons. Though if it were to reach its maximum size, then this giant would have weighed twice that of the average Tyrannosaurus Rex, and larger than even the largest T-Rexes. Fun fact, it actually used to be considered the largest terrestrial mammal to have ever existed, yet that title has been currently overtaken by the prehistoric elephant Paleoloxodon. But there is still a bit of a debate going on about who's truly the largest, as there is a limited range of fossils, so who knows, maybe our giant rhino was truly the largest. Though, technically if we're talking about complete height and not shoulder height, then we can say that this was the tallest mammal to have ever existed. It shouldn't be surprising that the limbs on this creature were both large and robust, similar to that of both elephants and sauropods. Its skull was over a meter long, and most notably, it lacked the horns we attribute to modern day rhinos. We know this as its skull lacked the rough surface viewed in other rhino skulls that act as a point of attachment. But to be fair, I don't see how a giant horn would help them too much, as their body plan just didn't really fit it. As far as its complexions went, researchers have based its look on its closest relatives, being modern day rhinos. This is why they're often depicted as grayish, hairless, and with thick skin. And to be honest, it makes sense, as its environment wasn't too cold, so hence having hair would only retain body heat, and retaining body heat for already such a large mammal in a warm environment wouldn't be ideal. As for its inner workings, we can surely say that this creature was more brawn than brain. An older study which looked at its brain endocast found that its brain was likely only 8% of its skull length. When we take a look at the same study, they had the Indian rhino brain at around 17.7% of its skull length. Now, of course, brain size isn't all that matters, but rhinos are already notorious for not being the brightest animals in the world, so take that as what you will for the Paraceratherium's intelligence. Multiple species of its genus have been dated between the early to late Oligocene epoch. Formations across Eurasia, including China, Mongolia, India, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Turkey, Romania, Bulgaria, and the Balkans, have all shown evidence of Paraceratherium's existence. So yeah, this giant inhabited quite a wide landscape. Its distribution aligns with the paleogeographic development of the Alpine Himalayan mountain belt, despite marine barriers in the area, as there was open land for them to migrate across. 
Parasitherium inhabited diverse environments across its range. Fossil evidence suggests that Parasitherium had lived in arid deserts basins in Mongolia, woody shrublands in China, and dry temperate to subtropical forest in Pakistan. This adaptability hints at this species' ability to survive in varied environments during the Oligocene Epoch, but its adaptability to numerous environments does bring up a few mysteries later on about its extinction. According to Deng and All's 2021's analysis, the researchers proposed a dispersal pattern from Mongolia to western Pakistan, facilitated by lowland routes before the Tibetan region became a significant barrier. This suggests that Parasitherium could freely move along coastal regions and lowlands, showcasing its adaptability to different landscapes during this time. As for feeding, Parasitherium had simple low crown teeth indicating a diet of soft leaves and shrubs. This is quite a bit different than later rhinos, which we can see specked into being grazers with high crown teeth due to grit in their diets. Using the Mesoware method, which studies the fingerprint of extinct or extant animal teeth, confirms Parasitherium did indeed have a soft diet, and isotope analysis shows that they had a preference for C3 plants, which would include your herbs, your leaves, and all those tasty greens that a young Parasitherium would have needed to grow big and strong. It seems that this giant digested through the process of hind gut fermenting. This would mean that it would have to consume a large amount of food due to a lack of nutrition. It's likely due to the hardy environments they would have lived in that they may have been migratory animals, possibly having massive home ranges which they would have traveled between. Now once we bring predators into the mix, I don't think it's too big of a surprise for anybody that there weren't many, if any, predators of any caliber during that time that could take on even a subadult Parasotherium, let alone an adult. But don't count out the predators just yet. One of these potential predators would have been the migrated hyenodon. This creature could have reached around 100 kilograms in weight. It was one of the largest species of its genus and was likely a hypercarnivore. There was also the migrated amphicion, which would have coexisted with our giant. Again, this one would have also reached around 100 kilograms in weight, maybe a bit less. And yeah, there was no universe in which these predators were taking down an adult Parasotherium. They'd legitimately get rocked if they tried. Plus, even the Amphicion would go on to adapt into a more omnivorous lifestyle. At best, these carnivores, along with any others, would have avoided confrontation, and if food was scarce and they had to, they would target newborns or juveniles. Certainly, adults were off the menu. However, I did say not to count the carnivores out just yet, and this is why. There was one predator that could have placed a bit of pressure on Parasotherium, this being Astrogosuchus, which was an extremely large crocodilian. This crocodile may have reached over 7 meters in length and possibly even weighed over 5 tons. There have even been bite marks on Parasotherium bones which have been discovered and the consensus is that this giant crocodile caused said marks. Now, I don't think that even this giant crocodile would have been quite capable of taking down a 15 ton adult, but younger specimens, especially when vulnerable drinking or crossing bodies of water, would have been a perfect target. All around though, Parasotherium was pretty much invincible once they reached adulthood. Not many, if any predators, could even try to take them down if they were in perfect health. All right, so we've basically gone through it. They evolved over millions of years, were very adaptable in a number of environments, and were practically resistant to all forms of predation. So, what caused their extinction? Well, the demise of Parasotherium is pretty much, well, shrouded in uncertainty, and there doesn't seem to be a singular agreed cause. Throughout the years, there have been numerous theories which have been debated to this day, with many more dismissed. This includes debates on inadaptive evolution, climatic shifts, alterations in vegetation, and low reproductive rates. Scholars Donald R. Prothero and zoologist Pavel V. Pushtvov deem these factors improbable, as they know that this giant had the ability to survive for millions of years in various types of hardy environments, and yet they didn't succumb to them. So why was it in that particular time that they faded from existence. Moreover, they argue that Parasotherium's size, although considerable, was comparable to other proboscibians, both extinct and extant, which faced similar ecological pressures. In contrast, Pavel suggested an alternative hypothesis, proposing that the arrival of Gomphothi proboscibians from Africa during the late Oligocene period, arriving between 28 to 23 million years ago, may have significantly altered the habitats inhabited by Parasotherium, akin to the impacts of African and Asian elephants today. And this theory does offer a bit of a better explanation. The ecological shift caused by these animals could have led to more scarcity of food that the Parasotherium would have specifically eaten, rendering them more susceptible to other threats as their population dwindled. But then we have the other side of the coin as Prothero disagrees with this proposal due to the lacking evidence of widespread coexistence between Gomphothes and Parasotheres, as well as a lack of evidence of interactions between Parasotheres and their potential rivals such as the Danothes. Now let's be honest, the extinction of this giant is filled with mysteries, but Prothero has suggested something interesting. At the same time that Parasotherium became extinct, it seems that larger carnivores and herbivores migrated to Asia, so clearly there's some correlation with that. It may be ecological factors were more at play than we originally thought, but either way, we know around 23 million years ago, the largest hornless relative of the rhinoceros disappeared from our planet forever.
And now with that, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did enjoy, then I would appreciate if you both liked and subscribed as well as comment below. As always, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.